Hey everyone, so we're back at Bush Gardens Williamsburg again. If you remember last time, we took you around to the different booths of the Food and Wine Festival and we showed you a couple of the dishes that we tried. Unfortunately, because of some technical difficulties on Bush Gardens' part and some slowness on our part making it around the park, we didn't actually get to show you as much of the food as we wanted to. So today's video is going to be kind of right to the point we're going to just take a look at some of the food dishes around here and let you know what we think of them. Last time when we tried some food, Jen's favorite was from Italy, the risotto, and my favorite was from Korea, the chicken bulgogi. We'll see if anything can top that today. We'll let you know at the end of the video how we feel and what our favorite dishes were. Our first stop today was at the Brazil Pavilion. We got what is known as churrasco. This is some beef in a chimichurri sauce. So we'll give it a try and let you know how it is. Well, we finished it. It was okay. I liked the sauce. I didn't think the sauce was too bad, but Jen wasn't a big fan of the sauce. On the other hand, Jen liked the meat. I thought the meat was just okay. It was a little bit tough and not as hot as it could have been. But overall, it was an okay dish. Our next stop was over at the Jamaica booth. We actually decided to get two things here. The first one is what they call a Jamaican patty. This is spiced beef inside of a pastry crust and it comes with a coconut jerk dip. And also we decided to get a little bit of dessert. This, as you can probably tell, it's a pineapple upside down cake. It comes with a Roman brown sugar sauce on top. We thought both of these two were great. The coconut jerk sauce was spicier than I expected, but it had a lot of sweetness in there too, so it paired well with the Jamaican patty, which the Jamaican patty seemed kind of almost like an empanada. The beef inside tasted almost like ground taco meat, so it was a little bit of spice on spice when you dip it in the coconut, but the sweetness of the sauce actually helped a lot. The pineapple upside down cake was also really great. It might be the best dessert on the menu, though we still have a bunch more to try. The rum in the sauce came through really strongly, so if you're not a fan of rum flavor, you might not like it, but the cheesecake itself was really great. Next, we went over to the Japan booth. This is the one that we tried to go to last time, but they were having some technical difficulties. I personally have been looking forward to eating at this booth for a long time. We got two items here as well. We got the Mushi Gyoza, which is a steamed chicken dumpling over here, and it comes with a citrus ponzu sauce. And then we also got a spicy tuna sushi cup. Instead of rolling the sushi up, they sat it on a bed of rice and they topped it with nori flakes and some spicy mayo. And of course they added a dollop of wasabi and some ginger and a package of soy sauce. So Jen and I kind of disagreed on the dumplings. I felt that the ponzu sauce was a little bit overwhelming on the flavor and it, the chicken didn't really come through as well because I mostly tasted the sauce. But my, it might have been my fault because I kind of put a lot of sauce on there. Jen really liked the dumplings so at least one of us enjoyed them. The sushi cup was really good as well. Um, we opted not to use the wasabi, or and we didn't use much of the ginger. We left the soy sauce packet there. Without those, it still tasted really good. The mayonnaise on there really surprised me at how spicy it was. I know it said it was spicy mayo, but I wasn't expecting that much of a kick. It really added to the flavor, and I enjoyed it a lot. Another stop where we got two items. This is the Virginia location. We got some hush puppies, which are bacon and cheddar hush puppies, and it comes with some honey butter. And also for Jen, she got herself some apple pie moonshine, which sounds delicious, but I won't be trying it. So there you have it. A testament to how hot it is out here. It barely took us any time at all to eat those hush puppies, and our butter has already started to melt. That butter was actually really good, and so were the hush puppies. It turned out we didn't realize, I didn't say on the menu, but they topped them in honey. I don't know if you can make it out, but the bottom of the container is coated in honey. And the honey completely changed the flavor profile of them. It actually made them taste something like deep fried pancakes, which was actually really good. 
It worked really well with the bacon and the cheddar and the hush puppies. As far as the apple pie moonshine goes, Jen compared it to Fireball whiskey, but with a more, with less of a whiskey bite to it and uh, more apple flavor. She said that she really enjoyed it and it, it basically just looked like a beer, so it, it was pretty interesting looking. We got to the Greek area pretty late last time, so we really didn't get to try anything there. So we stopped at the Greek booth this time to get two dishes. First is a pretty standard Greek salad. They refer to it, and uh, please forgive my Greek, but according to the menu, it's called a churia tiki salada. It's, it's pretty standard. It looks like it just has some cucumbers, tomatoes, feta cheese, red onions, peppers, olives. Looks good, but it's not very unique. Uh, next to that, we also got a lamb burger with uh, what, cucumber, tomato, tzatziki sauce, and it also comes with a little salad on the side. I've eaten a decent amount of Greek food in the past, and one thing I can say about Greek food is lots of feta, and these dishes were no different. The lamb burger had a bunch of feta globbed onto it. The orzo salad that came with it also had a lot of feta mixed in with it, and the Greek salad had a bunch of feta in it. That being said, I like feta, and I'm also a big fan of the tzatziki sauce, so I think that pretty much saved the lamb burger. The lamb burger was very similar to a gyro, except that uh, it had the texture of a burger. It really did taste like a hamburger. It didn't really taste a whole lot different like a lamb, like you would think a lamb burger would, but I still enjoyed it, especially with the addition of the tzatziki sauce. The salad, Jen had more of it than I did, but it was as expected pretty standard there was some olive oil on top of it and Jen was commenting that it could probably use a little bit of vinegar mixed with the olive oil to make it taste better but overall not too bad a quick trip to the Mexico booth and we came away with a carne asada taco and a chili chocolate and horchata mousse the carne asada taco has it's marinated in citrus and soy and it has a queso fresca and cilantro and guacamole on it and then the chili chocolate and horchata mousse is uh, spicy chocolate and cinnamon. So that should be delicious with my sweet tooth. I'm looking forward to trying that one. In much the same way that the Greek booth was all about feta cheese, the Mexico booth is all about spice. And it definitely came through. The carne asada taco looks like a war zone over here, but it was really good. My only problem is that the carne asada on the taco seemed like it was ground instead of pieces. I'm not used to seeing ground carne asada. I thought that was a little bit strange, but the queso fresco on there was great. I know cilantro can be divisive sometimes. I didn't mind the cilantro on there. I thought it was a great taco. And the horchata and spicy mousse was thumbs up from both of us. We both enjoyed that a whole lot. It has a big spicy kick in the back of your throat after you eat it and the cinnamon that they topped it with really added to the flavor. We would definitely have that again. Come full circle. In the very first video we started off in the Italy booth and ordered some food. We're ending in the Italy booth here with some sun-dried tomato alfredo. So the fettuccine alfredo was great. It was topped with some basil and it had parmesan and mozzarella cheeses on it. All the tomato and the basil flavors came through really well and we both really enjoyed that one. So there you have it. 15 dishes and about 7,000 calories later we're done going through the food and wine festival for the year. Our verdict? Well, we, I guess we have to pretty much divide them into two categories, the dessert and the savory food. For the dessert, Jen and I both agreed that the uh, horchata mousse was the best option on the menu. For the savory option, we have different opinions though. For Jen, she preferred the risotto from the Italy pavilion that we had on the first day that we were here. For me, I actually preferred those hush puppies that we had at the Virginia Pavilion. I know those were almost more of a snack, but they were delicious, and I think they were the favorite thing that I personally had here today. 
So if you saw anything that you liked, feel free to let us know in the comments. And also make sure that you t check out our Instagram page for more pictures from our visit. And if you wouldn't mind giving us a like and a subscription if you enjoyed what you saw, we would appreciate it. Thanks for watching, but the fun's not over yet. Click the box in front of my face for another fun video. Or click my tree to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another video.